On today's episode, SpaceX reveals the future of Starship, Blue Origin's New Glenn finally does something, and China's rocket makers are gearing up for another year of catching up. SpaceX is about to do something with their Starship rocket that we have never seen before. With the vehicle's seventh test flight coming up this weekend, SpaceX has finally revealed details about their plan to transition Starship from the testing phase to active duty. The next major milestone on that journey will be deploying a payload into space for the first time. SpaceX will be loading Starship with 10 Starlink simulators, by which they mean objects that are similar in size and weight to the company's new V3 communications satellite. According to early reports, the Starlink V3 is going to weigh in just shy of 2 metric tons, or 1900 kilograms to be more precise, which is significantly heavier than the current Starlink V2 Mini that weighs in at just over half a ton, which itself is significantly heavier than the original Starlink satellite. We can see that play out in the reduced capacity of the Falcon 9 rocket. It was able to carry around 60 of the original Starlink to orbit in one go. That's currently reduced to 29 of the V2 Mini per launch. Starship is expected to carry as many as 54 V3 Starlinks per launch when it becomes fully operational. That would be a payload weight of over 100 metric tons. But for this next test flight, the group of 10 simulators simulators should weigh in at just shy of 20 tons, and they will be deployed into space using the new PEZ dispenser mechanism, which is kind of like a little catapult that pushes them out through a slot in the back of the ship's body. Now, why would SpaceX be using mock satellites instead of real ones? Well, I think the main reason being that this is going to be another suborbital test flight, meaning that the payload deployed by Starship is going to experience a relatively short time in space before plummeting back to the Earth alongside the ship itself. And then the whole lot is going to splash down into the Indian Ocean just off the northwest coast of Australia. And that brings us to the ship itself that will be deploying this new payload. The first of the Block 2 Starship designs, and we know much more now than ever before about this new breed of rocket. There are some big changes to this ship that are pretty visible and well known at this point, such as smaller nose flaps that have an improved aerodynamic design to survive re-entry, and an increase in length to accommodate 25% more propellant volume. But SpaceX has just revealed a new collection of Starship Block 2 upgrades and experiments, the most interesting of which will be the addition of one actively cooled metallic heat shield tile, part of what SpaceX refers to as a test of alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. The active cooling heat shield is something that Elon Musk was talking about a long time ago. During an interview with Popular Mechanics in 2018, Elon described this concept, saying, quote, You just need essentially a stainless steel sandwich. You either flow fuel or water in between the sandwich layer, and then you have very tiny perforations on the outside, and you essentially bleed water or fuel through them to cool the windward side of the rocket. If that sounds familiar, it might be because SpaceX used a nearly identical concept to build the showerhead flame diverter system that has been used underneath the Starship for every launch since flight test number two. So imagine if you just scale that down to a Starship heat shield tile, which is about the size of a dinner plate, and that's what SpaceX will be testing on the next mission. That would be a very significant departure from the existing ceramic tile design, which is a lot more simple and in line with Starship's minimalist philosophy. But it's also possible that the glass silica tiles are just not going to be sturdy enough for rapid reuse. So the company is exploring their options. A liquid-cooled steel sandwich heat shield might end up being the future of Starship. Moving down through the list of new improvements, SpaceX is also implementing vacuum jacketed fuel lines on the Block 2 ship. So imagine a pipe within a pipe and there's a little gap between the two. That gap is then filled with a vacuum, which is to say there's nothing in between the pipes, not even air. And this eliminates two of the three kinds of heat transfer, conduction and convection. That leaves radiation, which is the least efficient form of heat transfer, meaning that the super cold fuel inside those lines is going to stay more cold. And that'll make the entire propulsion system more efficient. 
For flight control, Block 2 has been upgraded with a more powerful flight computer with integrated Starlink and GPS antennas. That system is controlling an insane 2.7 megawatts of power across the ship's 24 high voltage actuators. That's more power output than one of those giant Tesla Megapack battery systems and it's driving 24 electric motors. There are going to be 30 onboard cameras streaming up to 120 megabits per second of video through Starlink, so we should be getting some even more amazing views this time around. And in a significant milestone for Starship reusability, there will be a previously flown Raptor engine used on the Super Heavy booster. So if you remember back to October, SpaceX successfully caught the Starship booster stage with their chopstick arms. The whole point of doing that is to make it easier to reuse the rocket over and over again. Obviously, that booster itself was in kind of rough shape by the time it got back down. There was a lot of fire involved, so the whole thing can't be reflown. But SpaceX has taken the best engine out of that rocket and put it on their next booster. So that's going to be something to keep your eye on. And if that wasn't enough, we've got a whole new rocket that is going to be commanding our attention this week. The Blue Origin New Glenn. It might actually be ready for launch. After years of anticipation, we actually saw New Glenn finally do something on December 27th. The rocket completed a 24-second hot-fire test of all seven engines. Blue Origin says that they throttled up to maximum thrust for 13 of those seconds. So for everyone who thought New Glenn was destined to explode on the launch pad, it probably won't do that. But what will it do? Blue has confirmed that this is the final test prior to the rocket's maiden voyage, which at this time could happen any day now. We've seen indications that there's a launch window open until January 12th for New Glenn at Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. So this could prove to be a very exciting weekend for America's largest rockets. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp wrote on X, Well, all we have left to do is mate our encapsulated payload and then launch, with Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos adding next stop launch, to which Elon Musk himself notably replied, Godspeed. New Glenn is smaller than Starship, but at 7 meters wide and 320 feet tall, it's much bigger than any other rocket currently in service. And just like SpaceX, Blue Origin is hoping to recover and reuse that giant rocket booster, which the company has reportedly named, so you're telling me there's a chance, which is of course a reference to the Jim Carrey movie Dumb and Dumber. I, I don't know. Anyway, the New Glenn booster stage is going to be aiming to land on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean that Jeff Bezos has named after his mother, Jacqueline, which is very sweet of him. So that should be pretty interesting to watch. SpaceX is the only other player that has experience with booster landings, and with both Falcon 9 and Starship, it took them several explosive failures before they eventually got it right. So we probably shouldn't expect anything different from New Glenn, but it also means that if they do manage to to stick the landing on the first shot, that's going to be pretty damn impressive. As for the payload, New Glenn's exceptionally massive cargo fairing is going to be loaded with a comically small mass simulator. Kind of like what we said earlier about the Starship, New Glenn will carry a mock version of the Blue Ring spacecraft. It's going to weigh in at just over 20 metric tons, which is just under half of the vehicle's claimed 45 ton max capacity to low Earth orbit. The Blue Ring Pathfinder payload will carry a few basic systems to test in-flight communications, power, and navigation for future missions. The new Glenn demonstration should last around 6 hours from liftoff to the end of mission, and if successful, this would count towards certifying the rocket for US Space Force and National Security payloads, which require at least two successful launches. And our New Year New Rocket Roundup wouldn't be complete without checking in on what the Chinese are up to in 2020. 25, which could be a lot. We should be seeing two new variations of the Long March rocket family taking flight in the near future. First up, there's the Long March 8A. That's an expanded capacity version of the existing Long March 8. The upgrade expands the cargo fairing to 5.2 meters in diameter and is aiming to deploy 7 metric tons to a sun-synchronous orbit of 700 kilometers. 
Then there is the Long March 12A, which is more than just an expanded Long March 12. The new rocket design will be China's first state-led attempt at a reusable rocket booster. The plan seems to be that they're aiming to launch the booster to a relatively low altitude of 75 kilometers, which is technically just below space, and then attempt a vertical landing from there. Meanwhile, China's commercial launch companies have been working on their own reusable rockets for some time now. None particularly successful, not yet, but that might change this year. Land Space is preparing their Zhukui 3 rocket for its first orbital flight in 2025. We've seen some previous success with low altitude 10 km vertical takeoff and landing tests. This new rocket is powered by 9 engines and has a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 21 metric tons, which is very similar to the SpaceX Falcon 9. Then there's Pioneer Space, another commercial rocket company. Do you remember last year when there was an incident when a Chinese static fire test suddenly became a lot less static and the rocket broke free from its hold down clamps and flew around before exploding in a giant fireball? That was Pioneer Space, and they are seemingly undeterred by that spectacular failure. So the Tianlong-3 rocket will be launching for real this year. It's kind of a medium-sized rocket that is also aiming to be competitive with SpaceX and the Falcon 9. Anyway, should be a damn good year for spaceflight, and we couldn't be more stoked for all of it, so stay tuned.